What if I told you that our lives are so interconnected, so intertwined, that if you gave me any three items, I could actually show you how they connect to each other? In a way, that's what journalism is all about, connecting the dots. Well, what if we put that theory to the test, that pretty much everything is connected to each other in some way? My name is Dia Shin, and this is Connect the Dots. So how do we do this? By drawing the names of three random items from these three wine glasses. So I was supposed to do this with bowls, but I don't have three identical bowls, but I do have wine glasses! So this glass, we have names of different daily objects, this one have events, and this one have names of different issues. So let's draw the items to see what I get. Starting with an object, we've got face mask. Definitely our pandemic buddy, our new daily item. And this one, I actually really like this topic because who knew face mask could be so controversial. All right, let's go to the event. Plastic surgery. <laughs> As a Korean, I feel very privileged to talk about plastic surgery because we are quite well known for it. Yeah, this will be an interesting one. Maybe I'll get to talk to them about what plastic surgery I need. Fun question for myself. What plastic surgery should I get? <laughs> the last one, the issues. Climate change. Not very clear to me what plastic surgery has anything to do with climate change. Or is there any plastic surgery trends that's the thing because of the global warming and climate change? But also I think face mask and climate change is very interesting because we usually think about masks in terms of COVID. So, all right, let's go see how these items could possibly be connected to each other. So I want to first tackle the easiest link, which I think is face mask and climate change, because for the last couple of years, most Americans and big chunk of the world had to use face masks. And if you go on the street, you see this littered everywhere. And we were told to wear gloves and masks during this pandemic, but now they're becoming littered. We're noticing an alarming number of masks littering Chicago parks on the late front. When it comes to climate change, I knew exactly who I should talk to. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist Aisha Scott. NBC Chicago's coolest meteorologist, Aisha Scott, who's actually filming her own climate change series at the moment. I hope he doesn't think I know like everything. Like I'm no scientist, <laughs> but like, well, weather-wise, but I'm like, right. oh my God, I don't know about the plastic surgery industry. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> climate change. Yeah. And you're doing a climate change series. It's, it's gonna be perfect. No, this is perfect. Yeah. I'm a meteorologist and I like to say weather is the great equalizer because weather impacts everybody. Now, I see sometimes masks in the street and I'm like, no, why do they just throw the mask like in the street? Yeah. But if we can find a way to make these things recyclable mm -hmm. so that we can be more friendly to our earth because right. this is the only one that we have. I have so many questions about face masks and climate change. And to answer all the questions, I reached out to these three experts. First question is, how much waste are face masks causing? Worldwide, um, a consumption of face masks of approximately 129 billion each month. In 2020 alone, it's estimated that 1.6 billion disposable masks ended up in our ocean. Are we doing anything about it? Can face masks be recycled? At TerraCycle, we've been recycling face masks for uh, close to two decades now. We shred them, and then we're able to separate it into the basic material types. And that turns into flooring applications, different rigid plastic products. And then you have the metal, which is sort of the thing that folds over your nose, smelted into new metal products. And researchers at MIT are developing reusable rubber face masks for healthcare workers and more. I have an early version here in the original prototype, so it's not, th these are not what they look like today. If you were using the one respirator per patient encounter on average, which is sort of the standard of care pre-pandemic, approximately like 80 plus million kilograms were generated. It's the equivalent of around 257.47s being generated in waste every six months. If you have like an actual reusable respirator, you can then drop that to below five airplanes per six months. But how much of a dent in face mask waste is that making? It's not something that is really happening at a significant level. From a policy standpoint, I think it's important to have incentives to encourage more companies to replicate behaviors that we've seen, for example, with TerraCycle, so that it's not just shifted to the consumer for responsibility. But let's flip the tables here. Increased face mask waste is affecting climate change, but can climate change affect face mask use? And the reason I bring this up is growing up in Korea, wearing a mask was pretty common way before the pandemic. And the timing worked out rather perfectly because I was heading to Korea to attend my brother's wedding. And funny enough, my brother happens to be the climate change specialist in the Department of Environment in South Korea. Just arrived in Korea. 18 hours after I can finally take off my mask. But it's 
공기가 좋네? 황사도 음, 없고? 깨끗이. 원래 지금 황사 올때 아니에요? 기본적으로 황사가 예전부터 있었기 때문에 건강 문제에 있어서 사람들이 그 과거부터 이제 마스크를 자연스럽게 착용을 했던 것 같고 마스크를 착용하는 것 자체가 낯선 행동이라고 생각해 본적 없었던 것 같아요. South Koreans have been wearing face masks for a while, partially because of h w a n g s a or yellow dust. The term refers to severe dust storms that affect many East Asian countries, especially during the spring months. The record of yellow dust exists all the way from ancient times, year 174 in Korea's Silla dynasty, and its presence has only increased with the climate change. Rapid industrialization, deforestation, desertification mean yellow dust has become a serious health problem to the region, pushing people to wear masks. If you think about wildfires, right? California is notorious for wildfires. And just like South Koreans have been wearing face masks to protect themselves from the effects of climate change, Americans may soon have to do that too. Well, according to my friend Anthony who lives in San Francisco, some Californians already have been doing that. One day, there was so much smog and pollution that actually the sun couldn't come out. I was on the bus going to work and everybody on the bus was wearing a face mask just because the pollution was so bad. And this was before COVID time, so before Or anyone was wearing masks for viruses or being safe in that sense, in the medical sense. But that wildfire smoke, you know, it also travels from west to east. And this was actually last year. I was in working in the southeast at that point, but we saw heavy wildfire smoke. Oh. All the way from California on the east coast, and because our weather moves from west to east, we have the jet stream moving everything along. We're going to see these periods where we have, you know, wildfire smoke or high ozone, and that all will lead to what am I trying to say? People having that all will lead to having to wear those face masks because of air pollution. Oh my That's God. what I'm trying to say. We've seen some rather extreme fire seasons in recent years. In the past three decades, we have seen. more than a factor of two increase in the area burned in the western North America. So you see increases in both particulate matter and in ozone in the western United States, but also in the eastern United States. Ozone is known to be associated with increases in asthma, increases in hospital admissions, and unfortunately increases in premature mortality. Um, the same thing is also true for particulate matter, only more so, especially for uh, things like premature mortality. Connection between face masks and climate change solved. So with that, I wanted to move to the second part of the puzzle, plastic surgery and face masks. Here's my friend, Andy Hello. Zhang, who's also a very famous Chicago drag queen, Eva Young. <laughs> Not to spill your tea on NBC, but mm -hmm. you recently got your nose done. I did. So I recently got my nose done. I did PDO. So the next day after, I did go to work. Andy's a pharmacist, and then, I mean, nobody could tell that you have surgery because... Right, exactly. Like, this is a perfect time to get anything done because you're just gonna be wearing a mask the whole time. So, <laughs> once the pandemic is over, and you have a brand new face to show off. Face mask. Was that really an opportunity for people to get plastic surgeries done during the pandemic? To answer that question... I have to talk to the most charismatic, the uh, most popular hmm. plastic surgeon in Chicago. <laughs> World. Yeah, in the world, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Coughlin is a Chicago-based plastic surgeon who creates hilarious TikTok videos about the world of cosmetic surgery. He has over 250k followers and this video even has more than 8 million views. Holy Man, I mean, this past year has definitely been my busiest year. We're up 40%. I don't know if it's because people are home, the recovery, the mask. I mean, my, my area is the jawline, so particularly for me, I did two cases today and I have two cases tomorrow. I just did a little pre-op with them, and they're both like, ah, after four days, I can go to work because I have my mask. The pandemic has changed the kinds of plastic surgery that people were getting. Nick here has been researching cosmetic surgery trends in the U.S. in the last couple of years. Eyelid surgery, that's up 38%. Uh, lip augmentation up 84% since 2000. And then a facelift is also up about 75%. since 2000. I, I think that people got more facial cosmetic surgeries because of Zoom meetings and things like that, where for the first time, they were looking at themselves in the middle of meetings and seeing parts that maybe they weren't happy with. And mask wearing also drew attention to this specific part of the body that most people probably never thought about. If you're wearing your mask and it pulls your ears forward like that, the masks are doing that to everybody. Okay. So there's a surgery we do to pin those ears back. So I'm doing more of those. That could be tied to the mask. 
So I'm currently in Seoul, Gangnam, which is like the mecca of plastic surgery in the world. While I was in Korea, I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to talk to plastic surgeons here as South Korea is often known as the plastic surgery capital of the world, ranking first on a per capita basis with more than 20 cosmetic procedures performed per thousand individuals. So I visited ID Hospital, which is one of the biggest plastic surgery hospitals in Korea. In fact, awarded as a hospital that performed the most procedures from 2017 to 2021. Uh, when we uh, cover the like low face mm -hmm. with masks, then, then we can only see the like eyes. Right. People are more concerned about the eye shapes, so there are more and more eye surgeries. And then, to the contrary, there are some like more uh, nose surgeries in Korea actually, mm -hmm. because they can hide, the cover up their like nose scars or no, nose uh, like, surgery. Uh, so. That's one thing, so eye surgery and nose surgery is kind of surge in Korea. Connection between plastic surgery and face masks, done. Now moving on to the most difficult part of the puzzle, plastic surgery and climate change. I don't even know, <laughs> like I don't even know how to yeah. connect the two. <sighs> I guess the best I can do is Google. And by Googling plastic surgery and climate change, I was able to find a paper written on the topic, four ways plastic surgeons can fight climate change. And I emailed the author. Dr just replied back to me and it says, Hi DS, if this is legit, I would love to talk to you. All the material involved gets carried out in plastic trash bags and at the end of an eight hour case there might be 10 full-size plastic trash bags worth of material that goes directly into the landfill. The sort of non-glamorous stuff that you don't see on TV but when you do see it, I, I think is... Uh, Concerning. In this paper, Dr. Mills came up with various pro-climate practices that can be adapted by plastic surgeons. But the real question is, does he think surgeons are doing this? Will this ever be trendy among the surgeons? Um, I don't think it's trendy yet. I think it should be, and I think that it inevitably will become trendy. And what may happen is that insurance companies who pay for a lot of our health care may tell a patient um, that they would that that insurance company would rather not pay their bill at a hospital they know to be wasteful and they're good they'll tell the patient well we're happy to pay your bill but you got to go to this green hospital that's accredited in a certain way or is demonstrated in a certain way and as soon as it becomes a financial incentive it will become trendy <laughs> money. But let's actually go back to TikTok for a second. There's a reason why Dr. Coughlin is so popular on TikTok, a platform known to have that younger user base. Gen Z and millennials are getting more plastic surgeries. So that population is doing a lot more plastic surgery, oh. and that population is more and more involved in the greenness of the right, world. Right. So there's some, there is a clear connection there because these people are they're open to changing their looks and they care about the environment. So I do a lot of fat transfer. So you can do filler off the shelf, chemical compounds we put in somebody's face, made in a, a factory, you know, uses energy to make this, uh, put in plastic versus fat. We can take your own fat from your belly and put it in your face. It doesn't get much greener than using your own fat. And fat's hot right now. Mm -hmm. So whether it be the shift to green that's I don't really think it is what's doing it, but we could push it that way. I mean, you know, there's a huge population that is anxious about putting foreign materials into their body. So fat is natural. Like I said, it doesn't get any more green than using your own fat. And this is also why my friend Andy got the nose job using biodegradable threads. So I did decide to go with PDO because it is more organic than um, fillers. Filler, they actually found that it does move around and even after years of having filler, they find residual filler in other places of the face. Um, so that's why I did decide to go with the PDO and it's a safer option. And using organic materials for plastic procedures rather than chemicals is also getting popular in Korea, like this one. So the components actually from the sperm of salmon DNA. And while Dr. Coughlin says Gen Z is unintentionally greener with their surgeries in the US, Dr. Park thinks that green choices are very much intentional in Korea. Major population for plus surgery is the young people, mm -hmm. early 20s and uh, late 20s. Customers are more interested in green actually. Right. So when they get something, for example, implant or threads or something, they one more like natural in the breast they want their own autoless breast uh, fat injections 
instead of like implant, we call it MG generation. Yeah. Uh, it's the more concerned about the, like green, so and then more natural. So one thing is that they want more natural shape, and then they want green products. That, 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 that's the consumer aspect, I think. So there you have it, I connected the dots. Turns out the explosive uptick on the use of face masks is causing waste issues contributing to the climate change, and it also influenced the amount and type of plastic surgeries people had during the last couple of years. In turn, climate change with accelerated forest fires may push us to wear face masks far beyond any pandemic. And lastly, intentionally or not, plastic surgery industry is slowly moving towards greener surgeries, in part thanks to younger patients. Anyway, those are the links I found. What links can you find?